Hello everyone. Define the collections set of all E1, E2, E3, blah, blah, blah of ellipses and R1, R2, R3, blah, blah, blah of rectangles as follows. E1 is given as x squared by 9 plus y squared by 4 is equal to 1. R1 is a rectangle of largest area with sides parallel to the axis inscribed in E1. En is given as ellipse x squared by an squared plus y squared by bn squared is equal to 1 of largest area inscribed in rn minus 1 n greater than 1. rn is given as the rectangle of largest, this is of largest area with sides parallel to the axis inscribed in en n greater than 1. Then which of the following options is bar are correct. Then we have four options given. So when you look at the question, it looks very complicated because the question itself runs into a paragraph. So this is a usual style of J advanced problem. So do not get intimidated by this kind of problem because if you try to read up and figure out what is given in the question, you will soon understand that it's a very easy question. There is no, nothing complicated about the question. It's only about the notations they have tried to follow. It's about the, it's about like they have tried to give an all the information. Okay. So, so we basically have a collection of ellipses and collection of rectangles. That is the first point. And to begin with, we have an ellipse and suppose say it is x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared is equal to 1 and a is given as 3, b is given as 2. So that is there. Now, we are going to inscribe a rectangle of largest area in this ellipse. So, so we have an ellipse, then in that inscribe R1, okay. So R1 is going to be, R1 has some specific condition. You can't put any random uh, rectangle inside an ellipse, okay. And next case onwards, what is happening? En is going to be the ellipse of the largest area inscribed in Rn minus 1. So, E2 is going to be an ellipse which can be inscribed in R1. Okay. So, inscribe E2 here. Okay. Then again, follow the process. Rn is the rectangle of largest area with sides parallel to the axis inscribed in En. Now, again, inscribe R2 here and so on. Okay. This process is repeated. That's the only idea uh, given in the question. So, if we have an ellipse, if we have if we have an ellipse, there are various possibilities of inscribing an ellipse. So, inscribing a rectangle. So, suppose this is our E one. This is our E one, and this is our R one. Now, there are multiple ways to inscribe R1 inside E1, but we have to choose R1 in such a way that the area of R1 is maximized. So, to do that, I'm going to uh, use a little bit of uh, uh, trigonometry. So, you can, see, you can see that equation of E1 is x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared is equal to 1. If I try to represent this parametrically, any point uh, P on this ellipse will be of the form A cos theta, P sin theta. So if I take any point P here, it is going to be P A cos theta, B sin theta. Right. Now, because so this is our origin. So because of symmetry, because of symmetry, area of R1 is going to be 4 times area of this um, a rectangle. So that will be 4 times a cos theta into b sin theta. Okay. So for different uh, choice of p, we have different values of area of R1. Okay. But we have to look at the maximum area. So this is, uh, this is actually 2ab into cos 2 theta, sorry, sin 2 theta. This is 2ab into sin 2 theta. Now, you know that this value is maximized when theta is equal to pi by 4. Right? When theta is equal to pi by 4, this value is maximized and the maximum value of area is going to be 
maximum of area of R1 is going to be 2AB and this corresponds to the point P being A by root 2 comma B by root 2. Right. So that is the situation now. So we have this ellipse and there is an inscribed rectangle. This point is P and this point is nothing but A by root 2 comma B by root 2. And obviously because of symmetry, you can write the other points as well. The point Q is going to be A by root 2 comma minus B by root 2. Point R is going to be minus A by root 2 comma minus B by root 2. And this point is going to be S minus A by root 2 comma B by root 2. Now what is going to happen? Now this is E1, this is R1. Now we are going to inscribe E2 in such a way that uh, the volume of E2 is, uh, so, sorry, the area of E2 is maximum. But there are no multiple ways of inscribing uh, E2 here because there is only just one way to inscribe E2. So there is just one way to inscribe E2 here. You can't inscribe E2 in multiple ways. Okay. So there is just one way and E2 is going to be, E2 is going to be nothing but, so x squared divided by the major axis, minor axis we know from here. Okay, instead of A, we have A by root 2. So it is x square by A by root 2, the whole square plus y square by B by root 2, the whole square. Right? Okay. Now I will I'll, I'll draw a neat figure. I will just quickly draw a neat figure here. Yes. So this is our E1. Even is nothing but x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. And this is our r1. r1 is with the vertices. We have already seen that the vertices of r1 are going to be a by root 2, b by root 2. And this will be a by root 2 comma minus b by root 2. And this is going to be minus a by root 2 comma minus b by root 2. This is going to be minus a by root 2 comma b by root 2. Okay. So we have E1 initially. Then R1 is chosen in such a way that there are multiple ways to inscribe R1. But R1 is always chosen in such a way that the area is maximized. Now E for inscribing E2 there are no multiple ways. There is just one way to inscribe E2. Okay. So E2 has to be chosen in such a way that um, we have this value as a by root 2 so here it was a now it is a by root 2 here it was uh, 0 comma b now it is 0 comma b by root 2 sorry it's the other way around it was 0 comma b here now it is 0 comma b by root 2 it was a comma 0 here it is a by root 2 comma 0 so the equation of uh, the second ellipse is going to be x square divided by a by root 2 the whole square plus y square by b by root 2 the whole square. Now you are inscribing again another rectangle inside this. The rectangle should be chosen in such a way that its area is maximized. So the same uh, logic will follow. Okay, now instead of uh, a by root 2, uh, it is going to be a by root 2 into 1 by 2, right? a by root 2 into 1 by 2. So, this point is going to be a by 2 comma 0. Okay, and so on. So, we have some pattern here. So, the pattern is nothing but E1, it was x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. Okay. E2, it was x square by a by root 2 the whole square plus y by b root b by root 2 whole square is equal to 1. Okay. 
en it will be x square by an square plus y square by dn square as given in the question but your an is going to be a divided by root 2 power n minus 1 and bn is going to be b divided by root 2 power n minus 1 right that is the idea here a is 3 b is 2 okay okay cool and similarly similarly r1 had vertices a by root 2 comma b by root 2 a by root 2 comma minus b by root 2 then minus a by root 2 comma minus b by root 2 minus a by root 2 comma b by root 2 okay so following by this pattern rn will have vertices a by root 2 power n b by root 2 power n then a by root 2 power n comma minus b by root 2 power n minus a by root 2 power n comma minus b by root 2 power n and minus a by root 2 power n comma b by root 2 power n and of course when you look at the options one of the options talk about finding area of rn in fact it is the sum of areas of rn so first option talks about sum of areas of rn is less than 24 so other options talk about the ellipses so first option talk about the rectangle so let's solve it first so so area of rn is going to be as usual four times area of the rectangle in the first quadrant that is a by root 2 power n into b by root 2 power n that is 4 into a b divided by 2 power n now uh, so area of r1 is area of r1 is uh, 4ab divided by 2 which is uh, 4 into 3 into 2 by 2 which is 12 similarly area of r2 is 4ab divided by 4 which is 6 area of r3 is 4ab divided by 8 which is 3 and so on okay so our question is we have to check whether the sum of areas of r1 r2 up to rn is always less than 24 so area of r1 plus area of r2 up to say area of rn is less than 24 is this true for all n that is the question yes now to solve that let's try to find this is an infinite this is a gp okay and this is a gp with common ratio half so let's try to find the, the sum of all areas from r1 to r infinity so n is equal to 1 to infinity area of rn this is going to be sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity area of rn is 4ab divided by 2 power n so this is going to be 4ab sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity half raised to n so this is 4ab into half divided by 1 minus half so that is nothing but 4ab and 4ab comes out as 4 into 3 into 2 which is 24 so if you take all areas starting from r1 to infinity that is going to be 24 so a for any finite number n the sum of areas will be less than 24 so 
that answer is right that option is right this answer is right now other uh, options talk about distance of focus from center eccentricities length of the lattice rectum etc so let's try to solve those numbers so distance of a focus from center for e9 that is going to be c9 and c9 is going to be root over a9 square minus b9 square and you know a9 is a divided by root 2 power 8 b9 is b divided by root 2 power 8 so this is going to be root over 3 divided by root 2 power 8 whole power 2 minus 2 divided by root 2 power 8 whole squared why because a is 3 b is 2 so this is root over 9 by 2 power 8 minus 5, 4 divided by 2 power 8 that comes out of root 5 divided by 16 root 5 divided by 16 so it's given as root 5 by 32 so that is wrong now eccentricities of e18 and e19 are equal that is the other option so let's try to find the eccentricity of the nth ellipse en eccentricity of the nth ellipse that is equal to root over 1 minus bn divided by an whole power 2. Now, this is equal to root over 1 minus b by a the whole square. It is independent of n. Okay. So, eccentricities of all ellipses are same. It is independent of n. And this can also be explained like you know that when you draw so many ellipses, these ellipses will be similar. These will be of the same shape. So, eccentricity will be same. Even without calculating, you can tell that. So, eccentricities of E18 and E19 are not equal. That's a wrong statement because they are equal. Next statement is length of lattice rectum of E9. So, length of lattice rectum of E9. Lattice rectum of e, E9 is going to be that is 2b square by a 2b9 square by a9 yes so this is going to be 2 into 2 by root 2 whole power 8 whole square by 3 divided by root 2 power 8 so this is going to be 2 into uh, 2 square by 2 power 8 divided by 3 divided by 2 power 4 so this is 2 cube divided by 2 power 8 into 2 power 4 divided by 3 and that comes out as 1 by 6. Let's check the option. Yeah, that is the right answer. So A and D are the right answers for this question. So it's an easy question. It's not, uh, there is no computational work involved as such. Only thing is you have to uh, visualize things and you have to find that pattern that's all is there in this question okay